There you go. Shout Kenzie. out to Animation Mentor. Hey! <laughs> Look, we matched today. It's pretty great. I'm too low. I'm too low to do this. I gotta. gotta there you go. There you go. Here or something. <laughs> uh. Let me introduce Jean Denis Haas, our our guest for part two of Animating from Home. Thank you so much for being here. We're really excited about it. Um, how how are you doing today? How's how's the world in your little corner of it? The world is the same in this room. I'm watching a lot of The Crown season one, so I'm doing a lot of. Have a very specific way. It's great. They do it so well, don't they? Yes, and it's such a great show. I hear like season two and three is slightly different. I don't know what aspect, but one is so good. If you haven't watched The Crown season one, shout out to The Crown. <laughs> I'm <laughs> gonna continue to with the crown. shout outs, but it's so good. It's it's a really cool show, I have to say. <laughs> All right. Well, I actually have only seen a couple clips, so I will add it higher on my list of things to watch. All right. All right. Cool. Well, I'm gonna um, pop out, and I'm gonna let you take it away. Thank you, thank you. I'm checking uh, chats here. I love that Tintin poster. Shout out to Tintin. <laughs> this whole webinar is going to be all about shout outs. Again, yes, they changed the actors in season three. Uh, I saw that. I'm also pumped because it's the, it's a really cool cast in season three as well. Um, <laughs> shout out to the actual crown. That's right. Anyway, this webinar has devolved already. Today, uh, and please ask questions. I want to check every now and then uh, about things here. And then I see the questions. I do want to get the questions more so than last time. So at uh, 1240, Holly's going to pop back in and cut me off as she should. Um, but I have a lot of stuff to show today. And technically today is all about how to stay motivated when you're stuck at home. I mean, it can also be how to stay motivated in general, but it might be something special now because you are at home and uh, you are slightly uh, stuck there and you can't go out into parks you know, sketch or go to DMV and observe people or to the airport, I don't know, maybe a long drive or something. But you know, usually we are more out and about um, for all kinds of things, uh, health and stuff, but uh, inspiration and all that stuff. And you get to talk to friends and they should, I think there's more interaction and there are more sources of inspiration uh, for animation, more discourse where you can talk about, hey, I saw this and I watched that and, and that gives you some sort of, uh, you know, a motivational boost. Checking here. Uh, thank you, Nicholas. Very good. Any way to get the PDF tips in the future? Uh, in the future, those tips, side tracking, uh, I will put them all on YouTube, but this is like, you know, months, years in, uh, in advance. So thanks for that question. Though. All right. I've got some questions already. We'll get to these at the end. So first of all, I want to reiterate what I talked about last time because it kind of segues into this webinar. So this is all very subjective, the way I approach inspiration, the way I stay pumped about animation. It's, it's twofold. A, it's stuff that I consume, stuff that I look at, stuff that I uh, observe and analyze to get me pumped. Um, and I have to say after, what is this now, 16-ish years uh, of animation, I just still actually like it. Like some people might get jaded or bitter or, you know, like, and for many reasons, for many valid reasons too. And just the love for it kind of declines and kind of fades a bit. And I have to say, I am working on the show right now that is so cool. And the animation process is so fantastic. I'm just, I'm back into when I first started where I can't wait to sit down and work. And I, I, I don't want to stop. Of course, you do have to stop. We talked about that, take breaks, mental breaks and stuff. But I'm just, the process of animation keeps me motivated. But I know this can't be the end all be all, it can't be enough, right? So what I do, subjectively, there are a couple of things that I do. So first of all, I wanna show you, generally, I go to LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram a lot. I mentioned that last time, but I check those feeds a ton. And I mostly follow artists and game companies and movie companies and animation companies, stuff like that. So it's fairly curated in terms of art and artwork and artists and stuff like that. But I see stuff there all the time where I go, this is so cool. I love it. And I need to analyze that later. So what I do, let me do a screen share and let me uh, make sure that I don't share too much. <laughs> Let's see here. This is my mail. I have it slightly uh, smaller than usual. But as you can see, I got a ton of folders, stuff to post, stuff to look at. This is for my channel. I got all kinds of uh, acting notes there with uh, time stuff. So you can see I go all the way up there. So I just watched, for instance, what is really, Ford versus Ferrari has good stuff there. Um, like notes everywhere for all kinds of things. This goes on and on and on and on. 
Same thing for ER. I have a lot of notes for, <laughs> for ER. And what I find, I put into the learning category. So this is stuff like folders of uh, making ofs and tutorials and stuff like that. And then specifically for animation, things I want to watch. But then I have stuff for creatures and lip sync and for reels and all kinds of stuff. So what I do is I, I find those things and I send myself an email, which is also then, you know, there's a, uh, like a timestamp so I can see what's the newest. And I share that usually with my students. But I also put that on a different, on a different site. Now, a couple of things I want to show you. First of all, I'm going to show you this clip here. And I'm going to go back. This I took from uh, LinkedIn. So first, shout out. Shout out to Frame by Frame Animation. If you are not following them, I would recommend uh, that you do. They are on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and uh, they're everywhere. I got this off LinkedIn and uh, got the uh, awesome animated Derek. And this is something like this. This is technically Sam's so going to play like that. And these are shorter clips. And sometimes it's clips from movies, clips from just animators, that, like personal stuff. But then they do this. They do really cool analyses of poses, what the actions are doing, what happens to the characters, and also spacing. Watch out for that. And shape change and the awesomeness that is this. And I love looking at that. How, how do they do the arcs? How do they do the spacing? on objects, on characters jumping, or all kinds of things. And I love that for many reasons. A, the clip is awesome. B, the work has been done for me. <laughs> I don't have to do the frame-by-frame -frame analysis. It's right there, and uh, it's just an easy way for me to kind of keep me in check. It's very humbling to look at that work and go, oh, okay, this is how professionals are doing it. Maybe this is how how I should do it. So I look at that, and again, I talk about it with, uh, with students, and this is this constant additional information that is for me, it's to learn, to stay humble, to get motivated. Sometimes I look at it and go, oh, this is so cool. I just want to go back and animate like the same shot and just copy it to kind of learn from it. I never have time to do any of that, but that technically that's, uh, that's in my brain. So many, many of those clips. And then what I do separately, let me show you this here. So I'm going to share with you my browser here. I'm going to change it to this. So apart from uh, LinkedIn and Instagram, it's also YouTube. So there are a ton of super, super cute. You might not have sound. Let me just, you don't really need sound, but I'm going to do it anyway. I have these clips saved and I love, <laughs> love watching these. Uh, and the people at home, they're stuck at home currently because of the lockdown and they animate these and they're great. And it's great because they're also Simple, not simple in terms of bad or just not entertaining, but like the setups are like in terms of the camera frames. If you just look at this, like there's nothing crazy going on. So you can really frame by frame through this animation. You can study everything. You can see this here. So good. They have different styles of it. And I forgot the hockeys for going frame by frame. There you go. You got the uh, comma and uh, periods. So you can go on YouTube and go frame by frame. I love this. So I watch whatever I can everywhere. I save it, I analyze it. And it just, that's, that's for me, I get a massive source of inspiration. Now, speak of which, what I do then is I do this. I have a blog, which is private. So I'm gonna expand this a little bit. I hope you can see this. And sometimes when I do this, the chat goes away, but I'll get back to it and check you out your questions. So. This was very recently, I posted it today, but I had it, I think yesterday. Just about a lip sync piece that could be fun with uh, characters that are pre-climbing or on a rope. Or I saw this a couple of days ago, turn that off, with very cool animation. Especially, I love the transition between, let me go back to Batman, as he goes in and out of things, how he disappears into clouds. And it's just kind of this quick back and forth, and this is the whole short there. It's just very, very cool. Sometimes we talk about stuff uh, during the animation method Q&As and I talk about ideas and what the students could do and then that gives me ideas. Sometimes I see photos or uh, paintings or concept art and I like this. I like the composition of having some, something like this with the uh, cool background of planets, massive creature, if you're here or here. Sometimes you see stuff like that and I like the idea of a little wood forest creatures fighting other creatures. Poor guy, he has no idea. It gets killed. No, 
again, just that or something, it's just a piece of artwork. And I love that this costume is, there's a little creatures there, that the costume of a character is alive. Like that could be really cool to animate and take that idea and totally steal it. <laughs> I'm not stealing it. Or something like this where that's just artwork. But to me, I feel like and I talk about that with uh, my students in my Q&A. So if any of my students are here, it's going to be very boring for them. But I like the idea of a creature, let's take a cat in the back. And I would combine all of these where the cat, there's a flap, right? So you could technically imagine there's a character there, either backpack or holding this, and it would be the character just walking. So a bit of a walk cycle, we can hide a lot of things. It's mostly the body that goes up and down. So you can animate a lot of overlap and movement in the character. There could be a dog that goes by that can kind of see in the background, which prompts the cat to hide. And then the eyes come out of the flap and then comes back out. So stuff like that. I look at this and I go, how can I take this and tweak it and change it enough so it's not a direct copy, but it still gives me inspiration for something new. And again, this goes all the way down with photos. Sometimes it's movies about what people do. Sometimes it's just quick little sentences of things that I like. Sometimes it's stuff like that where, hold on, let me switch to the photo. Where something like this, where this could be the beginning establishing shot of maybe a two shot sequence or three shot sequence. But I like this just because it's all about uh, the silhouette and the establishing and and the body mechanics, then you can cut to maybe a close-up. So I like that as a compositional idea. Same thing with this one, just with that nice highlight there and kind of the silhouette with all this kind of being dark. Something, stuff like that where it's about framing. This character's extra alone because this frame frames him alone, separate from the other people, and so on and so on. And I have this for artwork, for animation ideas. Sometimes I don't know what to animate, and I look at a set. So imagine this character's not there, not sitting, I feel like this is cool. I like the stairs. Maybe the character walks down and sits down or comes into frame and then sits down. So to me, it's stuff like that. And this, again, this goes all the way down multiple pages of many, many things, including audio pieces. And sometimes I do kind of quick little transcripts and I go back to listening to this and so on. Again, this goes on and on and on with lots of lots of pages. So I highly recommend that you have something like this where if it's, through email, right? It could be something on a blog that's private. Uh, it could be something in your personal, like a reference folder. Um, like whatever you have on your phone and then you upload it to whatever, Evernote or uh, Dropbox, whatever you have, right? But I would do something like that where you can get back to it. Like sometimes I don't know what to do. I go through this list like, oh, this gives me ideas for something else. And I combine multiple ideas. So it doesn't look like I'm, I'm ripping people off. But I try to, you know, it's, it serves as a springboard. And sometimes, again, I'm fairly pumped. As you can tell, I'm very pumped about animation. I love it. And it's not, it's not often that I go, I don't want to do this. It's probably never. Um, unless in the future something happens with this industry, uh, with the uh, coronavirus and lockdown. It's a bit tough. Stuff might happen. But you still got to find ways to continue. And for me, I just got to look at a shot. And then I get pumped. And it's, it's, it's for me, fairly easy to get pumped. It doesn't mean that that um, pumpness or that state of being pumped translates into awesome animation. My animation still sucks. It doesn't mean that it's good. I still have to work really hard to make it not crappy. But I like that initial, that spark, that spark of motivation. And I think if you are in a situation where you're stuck at home, right? And you're kind of like, I don't know what to do. Or, or you've been working a lot in, at school. You might be an animation mentor going through a couple of classes. It's a lot of grind, a lot of work, because it is a lot of work. Or you're at work and it's just a lot of continuous the same work or client notes that might be tricky. I think what helps me and what might help you is that you got to find a way to remember why you got into this industry. Like, why do you love animation? Why, why did you fall in love with it? What were the reasons? Did you, was it a movie you watched? Is it a sequence that you saw? Is it a piece of artwork? Is it an interview with a Disney artist or a Pixar artist or a Sony artist or something nowadays where you see a lot of making ups or people are online like, oh, that was cool. That piece of behind the scenes, oh, I want to do the same thing. Did you save this clip or is it something where you can find it again and watch it again? So it kind of gets you, gets you pumped again, basically, right? So for me, uh, I would think about that. And it's not, for me, it's not hard because we are surrounded by, by Star Wars a lot at work. So I still love Star Wars and I love it since I've been seven. And the house, as you can see, the office is filled with Star Wars stuff. So I'm always surrounded by artwork and we have costumes at work. There's constantly stuff that rotates around that's a new inspiration that gets me pumped. But clearly and obviously not everybody has that. So you have to find a way 
to channel that stream of motivation through those social media you know, channels or whatever you can find or the initial spark that you found and get back to that. And maybe it's also just talking with friends. You might have to do a little bit of Zoom hangout with your friends and let's talk about what gets you pumped? Well, what did you watch? And maybe find you know, people that share the same love to get you back on track, if that makes sense. It's a lot of, a lot of talking here. Let me see here. Uh, there's a concept that there are no original ideas, but rather infinite inspired ideas. I like that. I like that idea. I'm going to take that. Uh, I like to watch Into the Spider-Verse. Whoa. Uh, what's up, Danger Cliff for Motivation to get pumped? Oh, my God. Spider-Verse. Talk about being pumped. That movie from the get-go. Oh. Shout out to Spider-Verse. So good. Shout out to Sony for that. That was a, a drilling and shot into uh, to everything into my being. It was really, really super cool, I got to say. So yeah, movie, uh, watching movies. I like to watch a movie or a TV show once a week. It's usually multiple things a week. And as you can see, if you follow me uh, on my channel, shout out to my own channel. <laughs> I do a lot of um, acting analysis for animators on Thursdays. And I think, I don't know if I said this in the last webinar or just someone in the Q&A recently. I feel like I have gotten better uh, as an animator and that's better, quote unquote, right? Um, because I analyze things a lot and I, I teach a lot and I do things for the students where that continuous thing of having to explain something to someone, you still have to analyze it yourself and be knowledgeable about it or pretend to be knowledgeable. And all of that and the repetitive nature of it and the constant watching the movies and TV shows I think I've gotten better at finding elements that I like, analyzing things, doing this for the YouTube channel on a, on a weekly basis keeps me just, I got to keep going and I like it. Like, it's not like I have to do it because of my channel. As I said last time, as I said last time, I can solve at any point, but it's cool for me and I like it and it keeps me on track. And it just, I just, I feel like I've gotten better at, at finding problems in my shots, at brainstorming ideas. Um, and just generally, I think the sense of timing, like all that research and studying, to me, at least, uh, I felt like it has helped me a ton. Let me check here. Set your chat to all panels and attendees. That is Animation Mentor. Cloud, you have a chance of me, Pauls. <laughs> yes. Yes. Big Hero 6. Absolutely. Oh, another Big Hero 6. Shout out to Big Hero 6. I think once you have two of one, uh, it's a shout out. <laughs> Art is stealing. Yes, sometimes it is. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, nowadays, most movies depending on the budget, you know, like if a movie's not that good, subjectively, it's usually because of time, the budget, there are many reasons. It's not like because people want to do something bad. But if you look at the higher budget movies, you may or may not like the story or whatever that's in there. But probably 99.9% .9 of the time, 0.99999, the animation is fantastic. So even if you ignore the story, you can look at any recent animated movie and just grab a sequence and study that. This is what I recommend to my students as well. You know, find ways to, like, maybe you have a sequence that you like, and then you take screen grabs of just the hands or facials or a head turn. You take, you know, an animated GIF or you rip it where you just see the movement and you go frame by frame and you study that. You make yourself a, a library of these are Disney hand poses. These are Pixar hand poses. These are Sony hand poses per movie, per character, per emotion of that character. And you can go really in depth in your reference and go through that and study that. Whenever I look at something specifically like this, it gets me pumped. It gets me pumped. Incredibles is my go-to for motivation. Oh, Incredibles 1. So good. Bugs Life, Titan AE. Oh, yes. Look at that. Shout out to all of those movies. JD's YouTube channel is awesome. Who said that? Shout out to Kevin. No, that wasn't Kevin. Who was that? But a shout out to Kevin anyway. Ah, oh, that was Animation Mentor <laughs> plugging my channel. Thank you so much. Um, so one thing I want to do, because I do want to get to your questions, but I want to go through a shot. So some of you might watch this and go, well, JD, you talk a lot about looking at things and screenshotting those and blah, 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 blah. And, and how, like, how does, like, how do you identify things and how does that work? And, or what, what do you like in those shots? I'm assuming, I know you're assuming uh, you're asking that. So what I want to do is I want to go through a clip. It's a longer clip. And if some of my students from uh, my current mentor classes are watching these, apologize because we went through this before with them. So feel free to tune out, but I want to show you this clip here. Okay, I'm going to share. There is sound, so turn on your headphones. And this is by, as you can see, Anim Woodsy. Follow this guy on this guy. That sounds so dismissive. I follow him on Instagram, uh, post a lot of cool stuff. And apparently he said that this was the shot that got him into uh, Disney. 
and it's a longer shot. Usually I recommend students to do something short so they can focus on it and finish and polish it so they don't get overwhelmed with the amount of work. Now I say this and this shot is over a thousand frames. <laughs> it's really long, but I love it. So let me just play the whole thing and then I will go through all the things that I love about it. And hopefully that is for you uh, a source of inspiration, maybe a source of clarification of what I mean. So let's watch this, right? Sound on. So good. Oh, just that shot alone gets me pumped. Gotta say. All right, let's watch this. Let me just double check. Again, I don't have any. Uh, the chat gets turned off when I do this. Oh, no, it's back. It's back. It's back. It's back. Just checking. I see blinking lights, making sure that I don't miss anything or people go, no. All right. Why do I like this? So, first of all, if you watch my stuff, you know I am madly in love with sets, props, set pieces, environments. Clearly, you can do obvious, you know, like great animation with just a character and an empty background. As I always say, there are many, many examples out there where that is awesome. And I totally agree. And it's great. And I, I have real examples where you have a character and an empty scene, waist up, and it's fantastic. And I would hire that person right away. That being said, a set and props can give you so many other opportunities and ideas and sources for acting choices and conflict and problems and blah, 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 blah. So let's watch this, right? So first of all, we have a piano. Cigarette, you got ashtray, blah, 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 all that good stuff. So turn on the sound a little bit. Hope it works. So he plays, right? So first of all, the animation is already great where he starts at a specific, let's go all the way back here, fairly straight, and he gets really into it. Goes that, eyes closed. He knows this. He doesn't have to look here. He's completely concentrated and loves it. And then this happens. Doesn't work. And then you got the contrast here because he was so bent over. Now he's suddenly straight. If you will keep this animation always in this straight pose, the contrast would be less. I already like this in terms of the uh, line of action, the body poses. This not working, the, the, the tone and the sound here on those keys, that is the conflict of the character. So if you have ever any problems in terms of, I don't know what my uh, character should do, give the character a problem. So like my horrible example that I gave in Q&As and things is that imagine you have, hold on, let me, let me turn this off here. <laughs> this is so horrible. Imagine you have your dog on fire, your puppy's on fire, and your computer is on fire with all of the animation work you've ever done. Like which one are you gonna save? The computer, of course, because you know all the animation work is on there. And usually people go, no, how dare you? And of course, I'm kidding, I would save my dog for sure. But the thing is, when you have a problem, when the character's facing a problem, the character has to make a choice to fix that problem. And the choices will reveal character, right? And in this case, it will be a villain, which shout out to uh, villains out there. That sounds really weird. Your reels, just a little tip, the reels are usually too nice. Characters are way too nice. Movies usually have a villain. So animate a villain. It doesn't have to be really, really super mean, right? But you can do something where it's slightly mean. So don't forget to include villains in your reel. All right, let's go back. It's a weird shout out to villains. Disney villains, how about that? Disney villains. So we have this contrast here in this body here. And he looks at it. And I like this. He gets a bit more hunched over to concentrate. He tries it again. And I love that. Look at that. Different hand pose. I'm a massively big fan of contrast. So you got contrasting pose here, contrasting pose here. Also, watch the mouth when he does it again. Ready? And he goes, pa, 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 pa. He mouths this. My dad, I think we talked about this last time. My dad plays uh, music. Uh, he plays the tenor saxophone, and, but he also does music on the piano. And man, he, my childhood was him going bah, 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 on the same key, thinking it's going to change. I can so relate with this problem right now. But anyway, he does this, tries it again. It's like, eh. Tries it again here. Doesn't work. You can see this now from the pose before. Hunched over, scrunched together. The tension of the jaw clench brings the cigarette up. Everything is, uh, and now there's a problem. So now the cool thing is that that's the length of the shot. 
he goes into a montage of changes. So concentrated, right? So the contrast that I'm not looking, I'm super confident, I'm overconfident, right? Now I got to concentrate, something's not working. Doesn't work. Oh, sigh, goes even lower. Tries it again, he's standing. Really concentrated, look at this. Everything points towards that, it's like, Arr! doesn't work. Then you got the prop here, the cigarette. Spits it out. Speaking of cigarette, let's go back. This is why I love this. Look at this. The ashtray serves as a visual indication of the passage of time. Look at this. Press it once. One cigarette. More. More. And it continues. That's great. I love that detail. So it does all of this. And th this is cool too. Listen to this. All that. And then it gets cut off. And I love this contrast. I'm bring up the volume a little bit. When you have sound, 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 silence. So watch this again. Energy is suddenly dead for a maximum contrast. And he plays this. It's the Star Wars theme, Darth Vader, the Empire. Now listen, he doesn't quite finish it. That's the other thing. I love this. Like usually, let me go back and, and stop this here. And um, let me see, can the video you're showing right now can be found or is it private? Uh, no, go on Adam Woodsy, go on to the Instagram page. He has it on there. Um, yeah, Adam Woodsy, check it out. You can, you, can, uh, you can see it all there. What I want to say is that what he uses here in a very clever way. And by the way, I am massively projecting my ideas onto this. I could be wrong about everything by 100%. Uh, if Anna Mutsi ever watches this, you can correct me, please, because I, I'm making this stuff up. But this is what I see. Uh, this is what I like about it. So feel free to uh, ignore everything I said. But when you do something, so let's say, let's say you have da 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 if you, if you sing this, right, you are expecting to go da 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 that, that, you expect that to happen. For a lot of things that you do, there is a setup and you are expecting a payoff. And the thing is, Adam Woodsy, yes, Adam Woodsy, that's the Instagram. So if you have a setup and you cut it off and you take away the, the payoff and the satisfaction of the audience to get that, it creates a certain response. And it, it might be something for like, oh, or something, ooh, or whatever you have. But think about that when you do have a setup in your shop. You can use that to your advantage to cut it off and not do it to provoke a certain reaction uh, in your audience. So let's go back here. Not only is he cutting the action off here with suddenly silence, somewhat, right? He plays this, but he doesn't quite finish it, which is also great because you're almost starting to laugh as you start to recognize the theme and then it continues, right? So the pacing continues. What I love about this is too, is that he cuts to this, watch this. <laughs> it just cracks me up. I love that we cut to nothing. And only at the very end, he does one move. It's just one adjustment. Also, watch this. Throughout the whole time, he is, regardless of what's happening, engaged towards this, right? He needs to play. He needs to know the notes. He's so frustrated at this point that he is actually turning away. This is the ultimate, I, I, I need a break. Right? He doesn't look at this. Also, a lot of cigarettes. After this... It cracks me up. I love how it starts again with even like this sound kind of kind of mimics his his mood. And now that thing is here, more cigarettes, and he has now it's a great display of detail and facial animation and interaction. Watch the nose. Boing. Watch this again. Oh, let's go back. Boing. So good. All of that. Also, may I uh, uh, point the attention to the hair? Look at this. Starts off. Nice and clean, right? He's da -da 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 -da. he's all clean. And now at the end of all this, disheveled. Look at the face. Somewhat clean, right? Clean shaven mustache. Then we go to here. Look at that. Five o'clock shadow, little beard, little rings there, somewhat gray. It's great. That progression is even in the textures. Mm, I love it. That's the amount of detail that I love. Now watch this. He sighs, he wants to go back to it. I love how it's almost somewhat bored and defeated. And then, because we are expecting, all right, he's going to try it again. What is going to happen? And he is guiding the audience with that look. Look at that. He has a massive anticipation towards the problem area, right? He looks and he gets away from it. He's almost afraid of something happening, the explosion. It's not an explosion. What do you mean? Like, he's like, mm, is it going to make that sound again? And then 
it works. Big change in the face. Oh, I can continue. I can't believe it worked again. Has a little reaction there. And then what I love is this. Watch his face now. <laughs> like he gets almost arrogant again. Like, mm, mm, yeah, I'm the best. And then it doesn't work and close this. And again, I love detail work. Closes that. It slams it, right? Watch this. Bam. Stuff is moving and impacted by the slam here. Bam. What a shot. Come on close this that gets me so pumped just watching this shot all right face touching is always a nice acting choice yes and very difficult too uh like in terms of like interaction this there is who was that there is a dana rig by gabriel salas i believe it was the dana rig where someone did this or or sam or amy he has four rigs out there and he did one where, or someone did one with uh, squishiness on the cheeks. Oh, it was great. Um, and actually, someone did one with Dana where it's a close-up and she's crying or she has somewhat tears. The subtleties of that shot, so good. Anyway, this explanation is as great as the shot itself. You're too nice. But that, oh, that shot is so good. And I love it too because it falls into the face of what I'm saying. Keep shots short. Come on, students. Be careful. Keep it to a short amount of time. And here comes this guy. Eh, 45 seconds. I don't care. Now, that being said, let me show you something. Just because I am I'm horrible. I'm horrible at things. I'm horrible at taking my own advice. Um, if you want to see this. I wonder if I still have it. I do have it. Oh, my God. If you want to see horrible animation, buckle up. This is from... 2002. Oh, this is 18 years old. Oh my God. This is like twice as old, more than twice as old as my younger son. Oh my God. I'm so old. Yes. Taylor. Look at that. Shout out to Taylor, the chair. All right. Watch this. <laughs> this is so old. Please uh, be, be patient and lenient about the animation quality. But this was my very first character animation clip based on actual education because <laughs> i went through maya one and two where it's just learn maya and do stuff and it's like i have no idea about the principles of animation just kind of open maya and do stuff this was maya three lisa mullins shout out to lisa mullins who taught me or the class the principles of animation and disney stuff and just you know through examples and i think my initial spark and in love for animation is because of her class she was running around through the classroom and she was harsh harsh on her critiques and i loved it she would tell exactly what was good but she would tell you what is bad and it wasn't like hey you get an a plus it's great it's like, no no here's your grade this is what's bad fix this but anyway that's enough of a uh, preamble so here's the shot there's no sound <laughs> the, the assignment was i believe three to five or probably five to seven seconds um get out of the chair and as you can see and let me just change this a little bit here as you can see this shot is way too long i think it's 45 seconds as well and he only gets out of the chair at the very end. So get ready. But you can see arcs, right? Anticipation, more arcs. Like I'm putting in every single thing that I learned. Little surprise moments there. Oh, it's just so bad. But I love, I still watch that with some, some sort of glee. Then you have overlap. Get ready for it. He finds the problem with the chair. <laughs> the eyes, it's so swimmy. That, that holding is so swimmy. This is your dragon overlap for like, like a flag or a rope. As you can see, it's still not the assignment. <laughs> Gets up and still not the assignment. And now is the assignment. And then this. So like I love rigging this. I love doing all those little, you know, like stupid things in there. I love all that stuff. This is where like halfway through, I remember Lisa going, how long is this? <laughs> I went, oh, oh God. And then she kept watching it. And then like at one point, like afterwards, she started to frame by frame through like the dragon overlap. And I loved creating this, this uh, chair, by the way. I totally rigged all the little joints and everything. Like this is how obsessed I was. But the awesome thing was about Lisa was that, uh, or Ms. Mons, where she finished a clip. And then the first thing she said was, I hate you. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. The first thing she said was, well, after, like, how long is this? She said, I hate you. And then she said to the class, there are some people who get animation. There are some people who don't. And clearly you get it. And then my ego just 
it just exploded. Like, oh, like, ah, oh, guys, yeah, Bass got the awesomeness. And then the next thing she said was, and this is, you know, after 20 years, 18 years of memory, I'm paraphrasing. I'm sure she said something totally different. But the way I remember it, she said, okay, now let me tell you what's wrong with the shot. And then she went into like a 10, 15 minute critique of, okay, watch this, watch your arcs and blah, 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 blah. And she just went through the shot and it was so good. It just humbled me right away. And the main thing was, um, I'm not going to say what she said in specific terms, because I remember that uh, was slightly explicit, but it's basically don't fall in love with animation just for animation's sake. Paraphrasing, right? Meaning that stuff happens to the character, but there's not enough thought process. There's not enough character to it. It's just, it's just movement. And also that stuck with me. And it's really true and really important that the things that you do, like your character needs to see something happen. They need to react. They need to be a thought process. They need to be a decision-making process. So it's not just movement. That being said, I'm this great movement stuff, quote unquote, out there. As I tell my students, I'm not a massive fan of clips where people dance or do martial arts just because it's mostly movement. That being said, I see a ton of them where the style is so good. There's no thought process. It's basically just reacting in terms of like stuff happening in terms of action and, and, and fighting. And it's so well done. So I'm not saying it's bad. But what I would really try is to have a character either listen to something through audio or an outside influence through someone, if it's a pantomime and it's silence, but something where the character has to see something, process it, and make a decision and then react to it. Not that this is the end all be all, but it's something that is usually not addressed enough, I would say, in student clips, at least on the, on the earlier side, mainly because students are very focused uh, like to show off, to like, hey, I can animate. Let me show you all the things I can do, arcs and overlap and blah, blah, blah. And it's important that you are confident enough to let your shot breathe. Do a pause. Have your character think and do nothing and process and then have a reaction. That also serves for contrast, right? Where you have no movement and big movement again. Um, but anyway, it's 1238. I want to nip this in the butt here uh, and go back. Ah, look at that. Holly's back. Let's do it. <laughs> That's actually, I saw a question go by in the chat. So uh -huh. I wondered if you'd humor me to answer it because I think it's oh, a really please. good one and it yes. ties into what you're talking about. Um, and the question was, essentially, after all this time in the industry, do you feel mm -hmm. like you're still learning? And what things are you still learning? This gray hair, all this time in the industry. Um, <laughs> am I still learning? Yes. Holy macro. Um, it just never ends. It really never ends. And I, like, sometimes people say, like, oh, you know, I don't know if it's still good. It's kind of this false modesty and it's a hundred percent not that, but I really don't know every time when I start a shot, if that's the shot that gets me fired <laughs> where like I have, I have enough confidence to know it's going to be okay. Mainly because of the tools that we have and the support system with dailies and the people at work mm -hmm. and somewhat my own, my own skills after 16 years, but I still start a shot. And I do this right now as we're working on, on Space Jam with a character. And I've, and I've animated a specific character, doing tests for one character. And I've done a couple tests and in, in various complexity levels. And I know I can do it. Like I had enough feedback and I had enough examples. Of like, oh, I, I know how to animate this character. It's a lot of fun. At the same time, I did a test that's maybe like 10, 15 seconds. I think more than 20 seconds long. Very complex, all kinds of stuff. Now I'm doing one, people can be fired. It's kind of like a turnaround where you, it's kind of shows off the assets. So you can do textures and lighting and stuff. And it's so much simpler. It's maybe like eight seconds long, just a turnaround with like a character driven turnaround. And I have a hardest time. <laughs> Every time when I start, I go, okay, okay. What did I do last time to make this work? And I really have to take a pause and I go back to what I tell my students. Go start with the big, the root first. Like do your main action. Like imagine your character is made up of bouncing balls. In mine, is, I can't say anything, but imagine your character, like put a ball on the head, on the, on the chest, the hips, maybe even arms and legs, right? But start with the root first and you just go bouncing ball. And then you add another one. And then I, I add more looks and then maybe some squash and stretch and then eye darts and blinks. And slowly as I add layer, because I do a lot of post to pose and then layer method. And as I do layer by layer, things fall into place. And that's, for me, the learning process where I go, oh, right, 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 that's how you do it. And then go back to it. So for me, it's, yes, I learn all the time. Uh, and I learn through, like I said, stuff watching that I analyze on my own, or just dailies at work, you know, where you, you, you know your friends, you know your, the, the coworkers, and you sit in dailies and you go, damn, how did that, how did you do that? And then they talk about the shot and we analyze things. And it's just, it's like, wow, like every day you see a shot and you think, you think you've, you know people, 
or you think you've seen things, enough things to go like, as ah, an old hat. And every now and then there's a shot that just blows your mind and you go, okay, 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 I suck. I, I got to go back to the drawing board. And then I go back into learning and uh, hopefully apply something. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some great nuggets in there. So I think one of them is that one of the ways to overcome any sort of doubt in your abilities or maybe some imposter syndrome even is just to, to go back to the basics and go back to what, what you know about animation and sort yeah. of build back up from, from the core principles and the fundamentals and mm -hmm, then work mm -hmm. your way back into maybe some of the more detailed aspects of it. Yeah. And it's really weird because I'm doing this concept with the same character and it's weird how every time I start, like, this doesn't look good. Like how, what did I do? And it's, it's so odd that I can't, I just know it's a process and you just have to be patient and I follow those steps and I know that at the end it's going to be okay. And sometimes I want to rush, like, oh, I, I know I can walk. It's like the piano player. Mm, I know how to animate. And then I, I don't do it right because I, I skip things. Like, you know, let's go with the basics and do layer by layer. That was a great shot, by the way. I was laughing the whole oh, way so through that good. shot. It's really good. So it. good. This is um, with an old Ray Colton Norman, too. So like it's the most complex or, you know, like, like this is an older, it's still a good rig. But nowadays, look at rigs. They're so fantastically built. But you can see how much that animated got out of a older, and this is an old, old clip. But back then, you get something out of those rigs. So to me, so that's, that's another source of inspiration. I see shots with rigs where I think, oh, I thought that rig wasn't that appealing, or I thought the controls weren't that good. And then you see the shot, and you go, oh my God, this is so good. How did you do this? And then you're like, all right, well, it's not, it's not the rig. You know, it's not the design. Sure, better rigs, better design will help. But a good animator can take anything and and make it awesome and that's my that's like the sisyphus like the, the, mm -hmm. the ball i'm rolling up there all the time i feel that way about some of our beginning students and like bouncing ball exercises mm -hmm. like you, you see them walk through a basic bouncing ball exercise and it's great because it shows like sort of the basics and things but then certain ones of them will like put some spin on or some personality and yes. you're suddenly like oh i'm watching a movie about a bouncing ball i didn't even realize i, I cared as much about this bouncing ball and now i'm invested Speak of which, does it, I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm just going to go through it, uh, and I can put it somewhere. DM me, and I'll put it somewhere. This is from uh, Cameron Miyazaki, Pixar. He was at the Academy of Art as well. This is a bouncing ball, or two of them. But I showed this in the class a lot, where you got conflict. The conflict is defense. You got contrast. You got a, a heavy and a light ball. You got interaction. You have like, some sort of hinted at friendship. You have surprise. Bing! And you have more emotions where, again, you care and you got just the visuals of it, of things being diagonal and not straight. Like that shot alone has so much in there and it's a bouncing ball yeah, on a simple great. background, no crazy rendering. So good. So yeah. good. Um, let's jump into some of these questions. All right, let's do it. So, hey, JD, I got a question. I've been having some light wrist pain. Oh, you're a doctor now, JD. Um, from animating and I'm afraid it will get worse. Any tips? Okay. So any tips for sort of saving your hands and your wrists while being an animator? Change your tools, right? Mouse, pen, uh, track, like a, a track ball. I have one where the, where the thing is just the ball and not moving at all. People have a vertical mouse where like they don't animate like this would be a horrible posture, but they move just this around, um, and breaks, lots of breaks. So even if it sucks and you have a, like a, a flow state and you're just, ah, oh, it's so good right now. Set a timer and take, take a break. You got to give your hand uh, time to heal. So you need to take a long break for it to heal or you just take a lot of frequent breaks so you don't over inflame your tendons or your wrist, your muscles, whatever you have. Um, so that's, that's a big one. Just take breaks, like tons of breaks. Also drink water and exercise and stuff like that. Great. Um, Speak of how, do you, how do you build self-confidence? I never like what I do. Do you have any suggestions? Hmm. Uh, I struggled with the same thing. And not to say that I'm confident now, but I'm less concerned. Let's put it this way. Um, and it depends if you're at work or at school. Because of work, we have a lot of, like the turnaround on projects is very fast. So we have projects where I can be on it for a couple of weeks. Um, like Aladdin and Aquaman. I was on it for just a couple of weeks. I did like two or three shots and then most of it got cut. <laughs> but there are lots of different shots, right? Then you have Star Wars. That's like a year or at least six to six months to maybe 10 months. Um, that Quiet Place was, I think, a month or two. So lots of, lots of different projects with different creatures, different humans, different challenges. And because of that, you get to finish more. 
And because I have a higher turnaround, I feel like, oh, okay, yeah, this is familiar. This is before, blah, 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 blah. And if you as a student do like 10 second, 20 second, 30 second shots all the time, you might not get to finish the, the thing. You mean you don't get to polish it. You never get the confidence of, oh, I can actually make this look cool. Um, and you're always stuck in this somewhat blocking plus somewhat crappy stage because you never got to the polish. So I would say try to do stuff that's only like three seconds long. I know this sounds ridiculous, but let me bring up one other example here that I have because I love it. Whenever someone says, yeah, I need more time, which is me, because all my shots that I did at home are usually, if you go on my website, I think they're all like 10 to 40 seconds. I'm not the one to do three second shots. So let me go to this. It's so good. And I, if you check my Twitter, I retweeted the guy who did it. I forgot his name. And I didn't write it down here either. Sorry. Um, this is a test shot for Maximus Entangled. Watch this. Oh, so good. I'm going to make this a bit bigger for myself here. This is only three seconds long. But you have the awesomeness of the face. And it takes you know, some characteristics of a dog sniffing. Then you have this. And I love all that. Look at that. You got the first reaction on the ears. You got that drag. You have the nice curve. Then you got pop over a frame but it still continues with movement here. Then you got those really, <laughs> really nice changes. Look at that, only here. And then the drag pop into that awesome face and then only the body recovers and does this. Come on, it's so good. Three seconds long. That's so so I'm so sharing this because, right? It has so much in there. I, you see this shot, like, oh, yeah, you're hired. So what I would recommend, this is a long answer, a long-winded answer, but do short shots. So you can finish them, head turns, gestures, a sit up, a, a get up or a sit down. Um, so do as much as you can, short shots, so you can see that you can do it. You can finish it and you've done, that way you don't start a shot with, oh, I've never animated this before. You can say, oh yeah, I've done all of this in separate shots, but I have this, I've done this before. I'm not confident to do this on a longer, bigger shot. That would be my, my answer. Yeah, that's great advice. A long answer. Um. What have the technical struggles been working from home at ILM? Do you have any, uh, you know, like connection to servers, communication with teammates, anything like that? Uh, well, we have, that you can talk about. yeah, yeah. We have chat windows stuff like that we can talk about. We have uh, not Zoom, but our own thing that we use can talk about uh, with dailies and meetings. Um, and the only problem is every now and then it's like slightly hiccupy because of Comcast does not work, but it's like, it's my connection, right? Um, but I would say like 99% of the time it's fine. Uh, it's, if it's something, it's probably my route. I need to get rebooted. Um, but I have to say, not because I want to you know, like brown nose or you know, like because I work there, but shout out to ILM. Uh, the transition has been really, really good, really fast. And all of those tests that I've been doing on that, that one character have been at home. And this is a lot of polish, a lot of iterations, a lot of cartoony and detail stuff. And it's been great. So uh, I have to say, uh, I like that process. And so no, uh, the answer is no, nothing really major. Um, what are some good exercises, animation warm-ups, sort of short exercises to do if you need to take a break or if you need to practice? So take a break from a larger short shot or if you just want to work on um, sort of getting your skills to a higher level. Depends on your focus. If it's creatures or cartoony or realistic stuff, but since most of the students are more in the uh, more general cartooniness, um, I, like I said before, like head turns and gestures, like quick little, like a, like a leg out and sit or... I highly recommend that you look at this. This is again, one of my long-winded answers, but uh, if you ever need an example of awesome animation where you think the exercise is simple, it's something like that. Some people might probably have seen this before, but I'm not gonna play the whole thing for sure because it's really long. But this, these are character tests for uh, Big Hero 6. And it's basically character enters, oh, sits down. Look at that character sits, enters, sits down, enters, sits down, blah, 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 blah. So not that that's obviously not short, but I would look at stuff like that and go, oh, that's cool. Let me just do the opening of a door uh, or I'll look around or like someone like this and go, and look like someone heard something, right? Or someone sees something and follows. The difference between I hear something versus, oh, what is this? And it looks around and follows. So I would do stuff like that, like short things, again, that you can finish, um, but that don't overwhelm you. So like bite-sized reaction animations. Yeah, or bite-sized mechanics, uh, or like even like a, hey, like a lip sync where someone just says, hey, so something short. Okay. Oh, this is a 
this could be a broad one or it could be a short nugget. I'm going to leave this up to you. What okay. advice um, can you give to those who want to work in animation? Patience. Boom. All right. It's Next. definitely, it's definitely a longer answer. The advice is that um, it's a lot of hard work. Um, and it doesn't matter that we have access to more material uh, like my channel, I, I, you know, I have lectures online and you got software that's free and blah, blah, blah. None of that matters if you don't have um, the tenacity to continue because you're going to fail a lot. You're going to suck a lot where it's just, it's just not going to work. Like you're, you're going to struggle and that's just normal because you, it's, a, it's a very difficult art form. And even then we have help with the computer, but it's, it's hard. Um, it's a lot of repetitive work and it's a lot of frame by frame work if you really want to get into it. And then it's also a lot of it where it's out of your hands. I think out of your control where we talked about it last time where uh, you want to get hired and it depends on the budget, depends on the timing. Um, so you have to get used to a lot of no's. And then depending on, you know, which industry you go in, it'll be a game, TV or feature or VFX, like different cultures, different people, um, different work practices and long hours and not seeing your family. So that's my long winded answer. So first is just, and I think I can wrap this up into patience. You got to be patient in terms of the process and patient in terms of getting hired, which is of course not easy, especially when you have to pay bills. Um, it's just a lot of hard work. And I think that's the main thing that differentiates people. When I see them in my classes, it's usually you have a class of five, 10, 15, usually like 10 people. And it's usually one person that's going to make it as in like Pixar, Sony, Disney. Everyone wants to work at the higher companies. But usually when I look at it, it's usually one that graduates and makes it. All of them will make it. But it's going to be weeks, months, years until then. And it's usually one that stands out, one that's almost hopeless, but it always works. You always have to kind of work harder. Uh, and the middle is going to be okay, but it's going to take a while. And it doesn't matter if that's 20 years ago or now. I see the same thing now in the same classes. So, you know, you want to work at those big companies. Those are, it's a lot of hard work and patience. It's not, op it's not an optimistic and, and a positive answer, but... No, I think it's a realistic You have one. to be, yeah, you have to be realistic. It's not like, oh, I'm going to graduate and work there. It's like, no, you and thousands of other people. So you got to look at the animation mentor showreel, right? That's your gold standard, like showreels of all the schools. That's for you, your minimum. And then try to be better than that. And if you don't know how, find discussion forums, help, you know, help other people analyze shots. But that is the level you need to get to. Hard it's very uh, blunt. <laughs> Do you Let's do see. personal animation outside of work? Things for In my head, a lot, yes. <laughs> I have accomplished many, many clips, and I've won many awards uh, based on those clips. Um, Congratulations no. on those. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. It was, it was, you know, well, it was a good speech that I had. Uh, <laughs> yes and no. Uh, the last one was, I don't know, five, six years ago. You can go on my site. It's, uh, it's, it's the pigeon one. It was a, a rig test for a class uh, that I was teaching. This was an example for the students. And that was the last time because I just do a lot. Like there's a lot of work, a lot of teaching, a lot of family. Um, and every time I do want to sit down and do it, I mean, it's tired. <laughs> I want to spend time with my wife and my kids and uh, I don't know. But the, my main teaching block is spring and fall with all the classes combined that I teach. So summer is lighter. And I really want to get back to it. I really want to do something again on my own. Um, so the answer is yes, hopefully in the future. Do you want to pick one of these questions? I feel like I've been picking a lot. The deadline is my motivation. Absolutely, yes. I always work last minute, but I know it's really a bad habit. Any tips or break tests? No. Uh, I am a horrible procrastinator, and I do everything the, the day before, the morning before. It's horrible. Mainly because I get the best ideas then. I have yet to, f I yet to have a track record for myself where I, I do better work like three months ahead <laughs> versus the day before, which is horrible. Horrible. So don't take my advice. Um, recently switched from CG to gaming, uh, feel connected. What should I do to get motivated? Ah, that's a tough one. If you don't love games, um, you know, like the obvious, like play games, talk to people who play games, talk to them, what gets them motivated. Uh, and if you still don't connect, maybe it's not the right area. I don't know. That's like, I don't know you. So it's hard to uh, answer that. Do you have any programs that can use analyze clips that we find that save what we analyze and being able to play back? Uh, Sync Sketch has a, uh, option to, I think, export even into Maya, I think, into Grease Pencil. Um, and Keyframe Pro, which I'm using because it's offline and it's also for security reasons I have it sometimes for some students that send me stuff. Um, you can save annotations. Um, you can do that. How to put... Do you know what GD detail, detailing is? I saw that question. 
maybe good. Maybe how to put good detail in an animation. Um, look at, try to find clips that are good to you and then emulate that. Like you have to have an idea of what is good. Um, that's that. And then again, it's working big to small. Just do the main stuff first, like the main idea, the main, is it funny? Is it sad? Is the contrast? And then start getting into the details if, that, mm-hmm. if that's kind of helpful. But for details, just study detailed work that you like and then identify why is it good. Okay, I know, I know that this is always makes you sad when I do this, but we probably have time for like two more questions. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Um, is it a good idea to animate a creature dialogue scene? Absolutely. This is one of the most underused ideas or approaches ever. Um, it's usually cartoony humans or creatures, rah, rah, but it's so rarely like Zootopia or Ratatouille. I love Ratatouille. It's always my go-to thing of, does you show creatures moving like creatures, get up, move and act like humans, go back to creatures. It's the best of both worlds. Absolutely do that. Um, bah, 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 bah. How long does it take you to say a 10 second shot? Well, it depends. Ten, uh, person standing uh, a minute <laughs> and a, a 10 creature uh, fighting shot months. It really depends on the thing, but I would go, what I tell my students, it's like one week of blocking, one week of blocking plus one week of polish and maybe another week of polish if it's extra stuff. So I will go for maybe a couple of weeks. For me, it really depends on the complexity. It's probably two or three weeks. Maybe, I don't know. I really don't know. And then you have client comments and it can stretch out. A um, couple of weeks for sure. I want to answer one. Yes. This one from, from Jose says, any animation channel, uh, channels to get you inspired? And I just want to say that if you go to JD's <laughs> YouTube channel, it, genuinely, I watch your videos so much. And my favorite is still Spider-Verse, but you have so many good ones that you've done since then. <laughs> so if you want to get inspired um, and, you, and you just want like a great YouTube channel to watch, go search Sean Janiha <laughs> on YouTube. And, and too nice. It's too great. nice. I is mean, it ever too old to you? Oh, thank you. Uh, too old, too young? Well, not too young. I mean, it depends. Do you want a parent's pay for a computer that can render all that stuff? Uh, you know, like you know, pros and cons. And uh, too old. I mean, I guess we can end it maybe with that because I'm old too. And I get, I get that question a lot from people. And it's, it's a tough question to answer just because if you're old, things come with that, right? Either you're old and single. I think someone asked that last time too, but I don't want to reiterate that. If you're old, you're going to have, um, what's the word? You have- uh, Different priorities or obligations? Yeah, obligations where you have family or not. You have you know, bills you have to pay. You're old, you're tired. You can't do all those long hours. Um, so there's, there's, there's stuff that, that is tricky when you're old. But that being said, like I said last time, you got older animators, they're cake ass, A-S-S. And they do really great work. So I don't think it's it's- I think it's, it's the environment, the industry, and the culture or the company supportive enough of older people. And not to put the owners and the blame just on them, but you know, it really depends. Is that, is that something that you can do? Like some industries are favoring or you see a lot of old people. And like sports, if you're old, it's probably not a good idea, right? So you have to kind of look at um, what happens there. Last week, I did not say I was old. 36 is not old. 36 is not old. I'm 43. Two, three. Oh my God, I forgot. <laughs> three. I just turned 43. Um, so yeah, I feel slightly, slightly old. Just as a tip, anybody who turns 40, uh, watch out. Things go downhill fast. Watch out your wrists, your elbows, your, your knees, your eyesight and everything. I feel like my knees have taken a beating, but it's also the driving. You sit there and then your knees always kind of bend because of the, the pedal, like that, that pose all the time. Yeah, it's not good. So you got to do some more stretching. I started exercising again and stretching. I feel a lot better. And water. Uh, and just like last time, I, I apologize. There are so many good questions. Feel free to, it's an excuse to go on my channel. <clears throat> um, but post anything you want to know on any video. I get, I get notifications and I can answer your question there. Um, and that's it. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Sean Denis. It's always, always so much fun to have you. Oh, it's and- my pleasure. Thank you so much. We look forward to many more. Um, yes. Everyone, I'm going to hang out for another two seconds to let you say your goodbyes. And then we're going to call it. Queenly wave. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.